Hello and good morning guys. Today in an effort to get actors inside my game, we are making or we are implementing our own neural networks and we will train them, we will design these uh, using uh, this paper from 2002 called Evolving Neural Networks Through Augmenting Topologies. If you don't know what this is, this is a method for uh, making and training neural networks through evolution where uh, you change both the weights of the network and you also change the uh, connections uh, as well as the nodes. Uh, maybe I can show you this a bit more easily. This is a representation of a neural network with an input hidden and output layer. Uh, there may be more than one hidden layer though, but this is a uh, what's called a fully connected uh, feed-forward network. That means that every node like this in the middle layer is connected to every node in the layer before it and it also is connected to every node in the layer uh, in front of it. So all the nodes are connected. And here we try to keep it as simple as possible. We're starting with input and output nodes and then the rest is generated, all the connections are generated as well. Now I have tried to implement this before and it didn't work, so it is gonna be... I'm really curious to see how this is gonna go. This method is popularized, I think, by Seth Bling, because he made the Mario uh, network, and that uses this method. Mario, here we go. This uses that method. So this is what we're implementing. Here we go. We are just going to read through this and implement it as we go. So the very first thing that they go on to explain here is the genomes thing. Genomes are linear representations of network connectivity. Figure 2. So we can go up to figure 2 and see what this looks like. This is a genome. We can see there's a list of nodes and a list of connections here. These are all genes. But there are different kinds of genes. These are the connection genes. These are the node genes, right? And that produces a network that looks like this. So we can see this node 1, 2, and 3 are sensor nodes. That means they are at the input end of this network. They correspond to this input row right here. And the output, this number 4 up here, corresponds to the output. And the hidden is in the hidden layer, of course. We have a connection here that goes from node 1 to node Four. So we can see that here it has a weight, it has an enabled bit, and it has an innovation number. So let's see what the paper says about this. Each genome includes a list of connection genes, each of which refer to two node genes being connected. Alright, so we can already go into Eclipse and start programming a bit here. Alright, each genome includes a list of connection genes, each of which refers to two nodes being connected. Node genes provide a list of inputs, hidden nodes, and outputs that can be connected. Each connection gene specifies the in node, the out node, and the... Okay, so this talks about each connection genes, right? So we can, we can now implement our connection gene. The in node, the out node, the weight of the connection. All right, let's do that. Okay, so we just represented these by ints because each node is gonna be stored in this list by an index. So we can refer to each node with a number. Whether or not the connection genes is expressed and an innovation number, All right? Let's make a node gene. All right. Now I think we might need uh, some getters and setters, or some getters and. Uh, a constructor. So I'm gonna do that 
really quickly. All right, now we got constructors and getters, so I think we're ready to implement the uh, mutations. Let's go back to the paper here and see which types we are working with again. Um, each mutation expands the size of the genome by adding genes. In the add connection mutation, a new single, a single new connection gene with a random weight is added, connecting two previously unconnected nodes. All right. All right, I think we are ready to continue here. If this uh, reversed Boolean becomes true, then we need to connect node two to node one instead of node one to node two. And we check if the connection already exists. I can't think of anything else that can go wrong, so let's create the connection down here. Let's see how we can initialize this. By an in node, an out node, a weight, and an expressed boolean, and an innovation number. Now, most of these we can uh, we have already. Okay, so if it is reversed, then this parameter is going to be the node 2 ID, else it's going to be node 1 ID. That is the in node. We're going to do the same thing for the out node here, uh, except in the other direction. So if it is reversed, then our out node is going to be node 1. And if it is not reversed, then our out, out node is going to be 2. Great, now we need a weight. Let's just, I don't know, let's do something. Uh, let's do a random weight. Let's add the weight down here. The expressed boolean is going to be whether or not this connection is active and we need that later. But for new connections that we are making, such as this one, we want this to be expressed. And we'll see in the paper later why that, why that is. Now we need the innovation number. Now, I am not exactly sure what we are going to do about this. Um, I can, I know that the innovation number is, uh, you know, it is just a number that increases by each gene here, but how we are gonna keep track of it, I don't know. All right, let's keep, let's, let's keep pushing forward here. In the add node mutation, an existing connection is split and the new node placed where the old connection used to be. The old connection is disabled and two new connections are added to the genome. The new connection leading into the new node receiving a weight of one and the new connection leading out receives the same weight as the old connection. So let's see if we can implement that let's just do zero for the innovation number for now all right i think we're done with the add node mutation uh let's see i am noticing that this is yellow if the connection exists we never do anything with it oh uh let us just silently not do the mutation if the mutation already exists Else we do the new connection gene and we actually also need to add this connection gene to the connections. Great, so that is two mutations down. Let's continue. Okay, I think we are about ready to continue here by adding the innovation numbers. As far as I can tell, the innovation numbers are just, uh, just on the connection genes. Um, Okay, I finally found this uh, piece of uh, conversation on the neat users page on Yahoo. This has got to be, hmm, really old, apparently not, 2016. Well, this is someone that asked, do node genes also have innovation numbers? 
and it turns out they don't need to have innovation numbers. So I think I am about ready to write the crossover function for my genomes here. That means uh, that's a function that will spit out a new genome um, from two parent genomes. Let's jump in. In NEAT, it is important that the that we can identify the most fit parent in this crossover function. So I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that the parent one here is the more fit parent always. I just have to when I call this function make sure that that is actually true. Let's just add a constructor here. Maybe we should also have methods to get the genes inside a genome. Let's do that. Okay, back to our crossover function. The paper, let's go back to the paper here. See what we have to do. When crossing over, the genes in both genomes with the same innovation numbers are lined up. These genes are called matching genes. Great. So I think I'm gonna loop through the uh, connection genes. Mm, is it the connection genes that we want? Let's do the node genes first. We need some utility functions for adding genes to a genome, so I'm gonna write those. Great, we ha now have two methods to add genes. So down here in the crossover function, we can now add the new... Oh, no, we need one more. We need one more thing here. Uh, for a node gene, we need a way to copy it so we don't reuse the same object. Great, we now have a copy function. I think now we are ready to write this crossover function. This is commentary from the editing room again. The first part of this crossover function was really hard to, to write because I got confused about the node genes, how those should cross over, but it turns out I just needed to uh, take the node genes from the most fit parent. So that's what I did. The rest of this is the crossover from, or for, connection genes. So enjoy. Let's maybe, let's make a change. Let's make a change to this project here. Instead of having a list, I think we should map these. I think mapping would be better. So we're gonna map the node genes by their IDs, still like it was in the array, and we're gonna map the connection genes by their uh, innovation number. Okay, I think I have converted this class now such that our genes are stored in a map. So we can reference them, these uh, connection genes by their uh, innovation numbers here and these node genes by their 
ID instead of having them in an array. I think that will help me down here in the crossover function. Let's see if we can do something about this. Um, get node genes, that should just be uh, the values here that we are looping through. And the connection genes should also just be the values here of our parent one. But now we can actually check if the parent two has a corresponding gene. So if the parent two has a connection gene with the same innovation number as the parent one node, then we have a matching gene. Else, it's gonna be a disjoint or an excess gene. Genes are randomly chosen from either parent at matching genes. Okay, so this is a matching gene. Uh, so let's choose a parent. Mm, let's make a copy function inside the connection gene as well, because we will need to copy one of the parent's connection gene. There we go, that is our copy function. Now we construct a new connection gene from one of the parents. Now if random, if this, uh, we get a random boolean, and if the boolean is true, then we take the parent one node and copy that. Else we take the parent two node and copy that. Oh, and we didn't actually get any parent two node here, so let's just... Hmm, let's see if we can do that. <laughs> okay, now, let's see if this line of code makes sense. Uh, if we get a true, then we take the parent one node and copy that. Else, we take the parent two connection genes and get the gene corresponding with the parent one nodes innovation number and we copy that that should be all right i think that's all right else disjoint or excess genes oh we should actually uh make sure that the child gets this gene great now for excess or disjoint genes what are we doing in composing the offspring genes are chosen Whereas all excess or joint genes are always included from the more fit parent. Great, so in the case of a disjoint or excess gene, we will just make a copy of this one. All right, I think that is, I think that is it for this crossover function. So let's return the child. Hmm, this is a lot of code and I feel like I should test this uh, somehow. So let us run a small test. Okay, that took a while, but I think we are, let's get rid of this. I think we are ready to uh, test our crossover. I just wrote this class um, with these helper functions, print genome that uses this count notes by type. We don't really need uh, those. Those are just to generate these images. I've tried to uh, to recreate the example here from the paper. Um, parent one over here is parent one over here. I create the genome like this, adding the node genes and the connection genes. And um, I just uh, printed that to an image so I can see if my network uh, corresponds to the network here in the in the paper just to see if I've done everything correctly and I've already ran it here I have parent one and parent two let's open it up and have a look we can see here the the input neurons in the in the input layer here there are three of them one two three and over here in mine image we have one two three of those there's a four which is an output that it looks correct and a five in the hidden layer uh, that takes input from neuron one and two, and that looks correct as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this one is, is fine. 
let's do the same for parent two. This one is a this configuration is more uh, harder to read than the one in the paper, but let's see if we can do it anyway. Uh, input neuron one here is connected to six and four. One here is connected to six and four. That looks all right. Two is connected to five only. Two is connected to five only over here as well. That's great. And input num neuron three is connected to four and five in the paper. And on my implementation, it's connected to four and five as well. Six receives from one and five. 6 received from 1 and 5, that is correct, and outputs to 4, great. So these parents, they look uh, identical to the ones in the paper. So I'm going to do the, the uh, crossover and I'm, I'll see if I get the same uh, offspring here. There is one catch though. In this example, uh, this crossover, uh, these parents have an equal fitness. I'm going to go ahead and decide that parent 2 is uh, is more fit, so that means the, the disjoint gene here from parent one is not going to be present in the offspring. That is a connection from node one to node five. So this line right here, that is not going to be present in mine. If I get something that looks uh, like this, the same network here, without that uh, connection, then that means my crossover is. Uh, working. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that it is working though. There's one little uh, thing I want to change in here that is in the genome. We get this crossover function that actually should be static. I believe because it isn't uh, relevant for the for a specific genome it's just a a method that we can use to transform two genomes here into one uh, by crossover. So I think let's go inside the test class here. Let's create the child genome. Did we make that a private function? Public static genome crossover. We did not. Oh, maybe we should save it. There we go. Genome crossover. And uh, in my code here, I've decided that parent one is always the more fit one. And since I want parent two to be the more fit one, I am going to put parent two as parent one and parent one as parent two. It is a bit confusing, but. I think that's okay. That's okay for me. And I hope it is also okay for you. Let us print the child. Oh. Print genome, child, and child. And let's run it and see if we get some errors. Nope, and it already terminated, so. Let's see our child here. How is this child connected? It should look like this without the connection uh, from one to five. Let's see, node one is connected to node six and node four. Node six and node four, that looks about the same, right? Input number two is connected to number f uh, in neuron five. That is the same here as, as in the paper. Let's go for uh, input neuron three is connected to five and four. That looks correct as well. Check neuron five is connected to neuron six. It is. And neuron, oh, I already lost it completely there. 5 is connected to 6 and receives input from 2 and 3. No, 1, 2, and 3. No, just 2 and 3 in my case, because this connection from 1 is omitted because it is from the less fit parent. Uh, so this looks right, and 6 receives input from 
one and relays it through to four. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and assume that my uh, crossover function here is uh, correct and all right, um, and we'll fix more bugs as we run into them. Um, this. Oh, maybe I should say one more thing about this uh, this little utility here. You see this little uh, black square there? Uh, that uh, determines the direction of the connection. So the uh, the black square is in the uh, destination end of the of the connection, and that way I can see that my connections have not uh, are not facing the wrong way. Since this is a feed-forward network, that means that I am only expecting it to propagate from input to output. All right, I think this is gonna do it for this video, uh, since this took a while. So I'm gonna make this a series, and hopefully in a few videos we'll have neat that works. That would be neat. Thank you for watching my video.